I've got six subwoofer solutions for your home studio here today. I've got five subwoofers and even the sub pack, a device that delivers sub rumble directly to your body. Insane. So what's right for your setup and what's best if you live in an apartment? What about the best and baddest base you can get for under $400? I have the answers for you today. So do you even need a subwoofer? Well, for hip hop, trap, and EDM, it's going to help out a lot, especially if your main studio monitors have small woofers. I recently compared the best monitors for home studios in a video here. All those studio monitors have five inch woofers, so they're not pushing out too much sub bass. And depending on the music you make, you're going to miss a lot in the sub frequencies when you mix. And when you play your finished mixes on other systems, you might get unexpected bad results. Many times we compensate by adding a lot more bass in our mixes just because we don't hear it from our monitors. A subwoofer will fix this problem. If you're new around here, I'm Sanjay C. I have tons of information to help you build your music studio and tutorials on music production on my channel. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. I always get to the good stuff first in my videos and reviews. Hey, I'm including links to get any of these subwoofers in the video description below. If you use any of my links, it helps out my channel and you still get the best deals from Amazon, Sweetwater, and Zounds. All right, first up, we have the most popular sub under $400, the JBL LSR 310S. This subwoofer costs $399 and features a down firing 10 inch woofer. The JBL sub features a normal 80 Hertz crossover and also something called X LF, extended low frequency, a setting that emulates the response curve of a club playback system. This engages a 120 hertz high pass filter and boosts 10 decibels at 60 hertz. This doubles the bass output and mimics the energy of a club system. Is it necessary for your home studio? I don't know. Anyway, the JBL subwoofer sounded smooth so smooth and comfortable. The bass was just awesome. The build quality is also amazing. This was the most beautiful subwoofer of all. It just looks so high end. It does look more expensive than it actually is. The JBL sub has lots of connection options, including XLR, RCA, and quarter inch, phase correction, and features a standby feature, which you can turn on and off. This sub does not have a remote switch connector, so if you really want that, let's look at a sub next that has that feature. I think the JBL sub is great for the price. I love the JBL five inch monitors in my comparison, and this would be an awesome companion to them. Now, do you have to match the brand of your sub to the brand of your studio monitors? Some people say yes, it makes a difference, but most experts say no. If you get a sub that has crossover and phase controls, you'll be fine. Set it up right and you'll get the right sound out of your system. All right, next up is the Atom Audio T10S subwoofer. I was dying to try this out after the Atom T5V studio monitors performed so well in my speaker comparison. The sub is the same price as the JBL sub and it's down firing too. The total power is a bit less at 130 watts versus the 200 watts from the JBLs. The Atom's frequency range goes down to 28 hertz, the lowest in the comparison, except for the sub pack. The Atom sub has three crossover settings, 80 hertz, 120 hertz, or a bypass option. Now this sub has a feature to add a remote switch. The remote switch gives you the option to quickly turn on the sub or turn it off. You might wanna AB your mix with or without the sub on, or maybe you need to quiet down in your apartment at night. The Atom subwoofer doesn't include a quarter inch connector, which is surprising at this price, but otherwise it has all the other features like phase correction. I love the look of Atom speakers and this sub looks great as well. It sounded deep, punchy, but muddy at times. I, actually, I don't think it muddy is the right word to describe it, but once I put the JBL sub back in, I like the JBL more. So far, I've looked at down firing subs, so what about subs that fire forward? Any difference? Let's take a look at some cheaper subwoofers next and watch till the end so you can hear about the KRKs and the sub pack option as well. By the way, I got these subwoofers from Zounds. They had everything I needed in stock and the shipping was super fast. Great store for your music studio needs. 
The Behringer Next K10S is the cheapest studio subwoofer in this comparison that's marketed as a studio subwoofer. It's $258. That's cheap. So does it sound cheap? Well, it sounded good. It didn't blow me away. Even at max volume, I was hearing more thump than smooth vibration. The sub pushes out 300 watts of power, the most of all the traditional subwoofers in this roundup, but after a lot of tweaking of crossover and phase, I really couldn't find a comfortable listening level. Again, I felt it was thumping rather than really helping my mix. It delivered the low end when I soloed my 808, but the pleasantness of the JBL just wasn't there. The Behringer, like the Atom Sub, has XLR and RCA connections, but no quarter inch connections, and also no remote switch option. Not a big deal at this price, I guess. The subwoofer was fine, but remember, Behringer makes budget gear, and I'm a bit concerned about durability in the long term. It doesn't have the same solid build quality like some of the others in this roundup. Another great budget option is the Mackie CR8S XBT 8-inch subwoofer. Smaller than some of the others, but at $199, this is a great sub and the cheapest in this comparison. This is marketed as a multimedia subwoofer, not a studio subwoofer, but it's still delivered well. And it has Bluetooth if that's what you need. The Mackie sub doesn't include XLR connections like the others, but it does have a handy remote to adjust the level of the sub. Convenient if you want to lower the sub volume at night or something. The bass from this was on par with the 10 inch subs in this roundup. Great power, but less clarity. I like this sub because it covers a lot of bases, no pun intended. If you mix music and you use your computer for gaming, this is a handy sub to have around. Not the best in this comparison, but hey, it won't break the bank. All right, before we get to the sub pack, which is gonna be exciting, let's talk about the KRK-8S subwoofer. Yes, the 8S is the eight inch version, unlike the Behringer, Atom, and JBL subs, which are 10 inch. Did that make a difference? Not much. This sub delivered in bass, clear and punchy. 808s were deep and kicks had the right balance of sub smoothness and thump. When people rave about KRK bass, they're right, even with the subs and it's $50 cheaper than the Atom and JBL subs. And even at this price, it delivers every feature possible, including four crossover settings, phase correction, a ground lift switch, every type of connector possible, a foot switch connector, and a convenient standby on and off switch. Yup, everything. I think this is a great value, and honestly, I didn't miss much from the 10 inch subs in this comparison. Mixing was a pleasure with this sub and really complimented the studio monitor as well. People who own the KRKs rave about the performance. Now, KRK monitors are already well known for their punchy bass, but the five inch KRK monitors I tested in my monitor comparison didn't capture every sub frequency. This gives you the rest. The KRK and JBL subs are my favorite from the comparison here. If you want to pay the extra $50 for the 10 inch KRK, I'm sure you'll be happy. All right, I've kept you waiting long enough. Let's talk about the sub pack. The sub pack is not a subwoofer. It's a haptic device with tactile transducers, membranes and electronics that all work together to give you a close up physical experience of sub frequencies. I tested the Subpack S2, which easily straps to your studio chair to give you that low end rumble. What's amazing is the frequency response that this Subpack is capable of. I mean, all the way from one hertz. But remember, that's all feeling, no sound, which means you're now mixing with your body, not just your ears. The experience is totally different. What is this, like a massager? I feel it like. It's difficult to compare it side by side to the other subwoofers here. The other subs just didn't shake my body like the sub pack did. But all that aside, how is it for mixing? Well, it takes a lot of getting used to. I honestly prefer hearing the sub frequencies from my premium studio monitors versus just feeling them. That said, there were frequencies that the sub pack made me feel that I couldn't hear with my speakers. I mean, for mixing soundtracks and movies, this would be great. 
it's immersive, right? I needed time to get used to it for mixing, but once I did, things started to make sense. However, translating my mix to another stereo system is challenging. You really need to learn how to mix with this thing well before it translates properly to another system. So who is this good for? Well, there are two types of situations that the sub pack is excellent for. First, mixing with headphones. Finally, you get a full experience and no sound emitting at all. Also, this is perfect if you live in an apartment and don't want to disturb your neighbors. You feel the sub and it doesn't go through your walls. If I had to make a choice, I would choose a traditional subwoofer, either the JBL or the KRK from this comparison. But I have a feeling that it's just because I'm used to that way of mixing and listening. I'm gonna use the sub pack more and I'll let you know if I change my mind. All these subwoofers delivered well for studio applications, but now you know my favorites. And if you love your neighbors, you need to try the sub pack. Links to everything is in the video description. And if you'd like to show your support for this channel, you can check out my merch below the video t-shirts, hoodies, and even a sample pack. My friends, thank you for watching and keep picking the music you love. And if you need some headphones, check out my studio headphone comparison here. I'll see you there.